I've made a few mistakes and it's okay because Geraldine makes them too. We all make mistakes and we're all learning. Every time we meet a new client, we're learning. Every time we touch base with a client, we're learning. And connection and communication, how we script with them, those have been learnings for me over the years. You know, I did a coaching course, a year-long coaching course. You don't have to do a year-long coaching course. You can just join the academy and get all the information from in there. But I did that because I realized that I was too prescriptive and I was telling people what to do. No one was doing what I was saying. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists, and practitioners responding directly to the needs of a practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business, something clinical, you'll get the variety you need to enjoy and stay motivated in practice. So thanks for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast for our episodes. If you'd like more support, get in contact, and I look forward to working with you soon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How the devil are you? So today I thought that, well, I've been in business a long time, right? And when you've been in business a long time, other people think she's amazing. She's incredible. She can prescribe at the first appointment. She's so fast. She knows what she's doing. She knows, yeah, I've been in business 20 years. I've been in healthcare. Feels like forever. So I thought today you might like to have a little bit of a giggle at some of the things that I've done. And I've got two glaring ones that, and one of them just came to mind and it just made me think, oh, you can have a nice fun podcast on this one. So a couple of my mess ups from the past. Mess up number one. So this is not my mess up. Mess up number one was in college. And the lecturer said, make sure If you're going to explain the ingredients in a product, you're really careful about how you explain them. She said, one of my clients, I'd said that I wanted them, they they already had like a multi-B and she wanted them on a different multi-B and the other one hasn't. And one of those items was boron. And so what she didn't say to the client was, and what I encourage you always to say is, finish what you've got. And then we'll move on to this next product. In the meantime, hopefully, you know, we can get more of these foods in you. Or if we can, maybe we don't even need that product. Maybe we can get these other foods in you and then we can use something different or nothing at all because the foods have done it. But she said, she'd said, there's boron in here as one of the items. And so he thought to himself, well, I'm going to take my tablet. I'm going to finish it off. And there's boron under the sink in the kitchen where I keep it because it's borax and it's a cleaning product. So he proceeded to take some borax and ended up obviously in hospital in A&E having burns in his mouth from the borax from the cleaning solution. And so A&E phoned her and said, did you tell him to take borax? Who are you? And she was like, no, there's boron in this product. Yes, there's boron and borax, but it's totally not the same thing. And It's the tiniest amount in the world that's in this tablet. You know, why would you go and take borax from under the sink? So it's not a funny one, but it's a learning one. Rather than say, let's finish what you've got. The reason I'm coming to this one, and these things are in tiny amounts, but they're in the right form. She didn't say that. So that's learning number one. So that was when I was in college. Then when I was in college and we were right at the end and you're running clinic, you know, you're in clinic, aren't you? And we had a lot of refugees in the area we were in. And so we had a translator there this one day, and I had one of the clients from this community, and the translator was there, and he wasn't, I was like, and what did you eat for breakfast? And then he'd go, blip, and she'd reply, blip, one sentence. And I was like, you know, how much water do you drink? How much coffee? Because I always do a 24-hour food recall if I haven't got a seven-day diet diary. And so she said, so she was sort of making these little answers to him and it's like one coffee a day. This woman had palpitations. Now she had a lot of PTSD. She'd been through a very extremely traumatic, horrible, horrible war event. And so had many of, well, her village had been wiped out basically. And she was one of the survivors. So she dug herself out from underneath dead bodies They'd only managed to shoot her in the shoulder or something, and they hadn't killed her like they'd killed hundreds of people in the shed. So 
she had had this very, very traumatic thing happen to her. So she had palpitations. So it's kind of like, well, it's obviously the anxiety, the palpitations. It took quite a bit with this translator to understand. You know, she was having one coffee a day. Who cares? You know, her diet was actually pretty good now. There was some quite a lot of basic staples in there because that's what she was used to eating because they'd been war-torn for a long time. So she kind of got used to eating potatoes and things. So we had to encourage the vegetables back in. And and then when I saw her again a fortnight later and I'd given her some herbs and I said, you know, how are the palpitations? There'd been no change. But I had a different translator. And I said, you know, how many coffees do you have? Just the one coffee. And this translator had said, you know, I think I'd said, how many coffees are you having? And then looked at my notes. And of course, it's rude, isn't it, when you have forgotten what they said last time? And I looked and I said, oh, it's just one coffee, isn't it? Or something like that. And the translator had said, how many coffees? And then understood for me and then started talking with her. And then we got to a point, totally different translator, got to a point, I'm like, hello, I'm here. Can we find out what's going on, please? What the answers are? And it turned out that she was only having one coffee a day. It just turned out it was a Turkish coffee every day in a pot. You know, there's bubbling pots that go round and round. So there's like a litre of Turkish coffee every single day in this pot. So once we managed to wean her down off these two espressos a day, most of her palpitations went away along with the supplements and the herbs that we'd given her. And we were able, and she was getting a lot of counselling and a lot of support as well. So with all of those things, this anxiety and these palpitations went away. So when we say, how many coffees are you having a day? Let's remember to ask the quantity. And finally, the last one, this is also in student clinic. And this was because, as I've said, I always take a 24-hour diet diary. So I always ask what they're eating. So I said to this lady, you know, what do you have for lunch? And she said, oh, oh. And I said, she said well, I said, well, just describe it. Because I was like, maybe you don't know what it is. I don't know. She said, oh, yeah. She said, well, there's some meat and there's lettuce and tomato and bread, a bit of pickle and some sauce. And I said, well, that sounds great. You know, a bit of a salad. She said, yes, yes, salad. That's right, this salad. I said, oh, fabulous. Could you put some apple cider vinegar on that to aid your digestion? Because she had a lot of bloating problems. She was burping and a bit of reflux after her lunch. And I said, maybe you could add some apple cider vinegar there to help with the digestion and we'll try different things. She's like, oh, okay, then went on with the rest of the consult. Saw her again. She came back and I said, like, you know, how did you go with your salad at lunch with adding the apple cider vinegar? And she said, well, she was really horrible. It wasn't very nice at all. It's like, oh, that's strange. When I put apple cider vinegar on my salad, I really like it. So it's a salad that, so how did you put it on? And she said, well, it really soaked into the bun. I said, the bun in your salad. So what is it that you have for lunch? And she said, oh, I have a burger from the three arches, from the golden arches. So no, apple cider vinegar isn't going to go well on a burger. So I thought you might enjoy a little giggle on today's podcast and go, yeah, I've made a few mistakes and it's okay because Geraldine makes them too. We all make mistakes and we're all learning. Every time we meet a new client, we're learning. Every time we touch base with a client, we're learning. And connection and communication, how we script with them, those have been learnings for me over the years. You know, I did a coaching course, a year-long coaching course. You don't have to do a year-long coaching course. You can just join the academy and get all the information from in there. But I did that because I realized that I was too prescriptive and I was telling people what to do. No one was doing what I was saying. Because I was like, we have to go and do this. You have to do that. You have to do this. You have to do that. You know, you're on five schnitzels a week. You can't have that. You have to have this, that, and the other. So, well, they didn't do it, did they? Because change is hard and change takes time. And so we all make mistakes in the way we connect or don't connect in those cases with those clients. We've all messed up at times. And that is okay because we take them on as learnings. We take them on as learning for ourselves so that we can grow, so that we can become better practitioners. So you know that I messed up. And when I mess up with people on the phone or texting or whatever, I always apologize. And I go through things to try and make sure that my processes are in place, that I don't do it wrong again, that I don't upset people. So from today, have a good giggle. If you do want all the scripts and everything, yes, they're in the academy, how to speak to people and what to do and what to say. So, but yeah, I hope you have a good one. I hope this has set you up for the day with a little giggle of the 
with apple cider vinegar on it. And the coffee pot. It wasn't just one coffee. It was a litre of coffee. I hope you have a good one. And I look forward to seeing you next time. And you know the deal. Subscribe, follow, share the podcast with your colleagues. Pop it in the Facebook groups that you hang out in so that other people know it's here and so that they can learn from these sessions with me and the podcast. Because the more I'm shared, the more people learn and the more people I can help, which is what I really want to do and how where my passion lies. So we all have a passion, don't we? And I want you to stick with your passion and help me with mine. So have a good one. And I look forward to catching up with you soon. Cheers. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.